And when I was 15 years old, when I got this job, I said to myself, I am going to work here until the day that I kill myself. And, uh, hello? I'm still here, so I must be happy, right? I had me a And welcome to my future has been face fucked podcast episode Nueve. Nine. Nueve, eh? International. Yeah, we always do international. Do we always do international? I try to. Yeah, got to keep it international because you don't want to leave people out. No. Otherwise, you know, people feel left out. Yeah, and that's it's not pretty cool, literal. Man. People will feel left out. It's not cool, man. It's not cool. You should always try to be inclusive as much as possible, especially, especially if someday you'd like to make money doing what you're doing. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> but <clears throat> well, I mean that is true if you if you were want to make money, but that's not really the aim here. Just do it cuz we uh, like do it. That's fun. We're bored. Yeah, well, it's probably more fun for me. I kind of just make Sarah do. It. Otherwise, I'd probably just do it by myself, honestly. And that's no fun. That's no fun for me. Yeah. Like talking at yourself and then trying to like kind of kind of like have a discussion, but you, you're not really having a discussion because you're just talking to yourself. So, you feel like kind of a crazy person? No, not so much, but it's like, you know, like the cool thing about like being able to bounce things off of another person is like, you're more clearly able to like make your point or say what you want to say. Yeah. And also come to like new discoveries and new pers- points of view and stuff like that. So no, I understand. It's always more interesting. I don't mind doing way. this. Well, uh, good. I wouldn't do it. Whatever. Yes, you would. Quack-a-cha. Well, anyways, I guess, uh, so, <clears throat> how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty swell. Oh, swell? Yeah, wow. Yeah, pretty okay, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what's yeah, new? I've been watching what's a lot new? of movies. Yeah, and TV shows. A lot of TV shows, actually. Uh, which, actually, that's the first thing I'd like to bring up. Today, I accidentally... <laughs> oh. Because we got, we had Hulu, I think we said this on the episode before, we had Hulu Plus, and we got, like, two months for free, free. right? Yeah. For promotion thing. And I wanted to, like make sure we didn't get charged at the end of our two month run so I cancelled the subscription thinking that it would still register for two months still let us go for two months right what I realized is like when it did it when I did this last time I forgot to pay so I paid eight dollars one time that's why it let me go to the end of the month after canceling it this time no you're done and there's no way to reactivate that uh, prom- promotion. promotion so we had a, we were supposed to have until like October 5th or something like that yeah and it's gone today. September, it's gone today. August. Well, but thank 20th. God, thank God, we had finished every episode of, of Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. Kitchen. That's eleven seasons of goddamn Gordon Ramsay cooking competition show. I did finish it all. You didn't really watch. Well, I stopped. It. I could. I, I tapped out for a good majority of the last couple seasons. I yeah, was, I, was I fill you it. in, but yeah, I was over it. I don't know, I liked Drunk History on it too, which I was always a fan of those videos. And oh, now... there's definitely things like, and as actually as we had like kind of had it for a little bit longer and like kind of searching for other things to watch besides gordon ramsay besides hell's kitchen and stuff uh yeah it stumbled on some things that like oh, i was always wanted to check that out so i checked it out like drunk history was one inside amy schumer was another one that was, and i thought that was kind of funny it was actually ended up being funny it's not made definitely not made to be marathon, marathon. watch because yeah. it is extremely redundant it gets really redundant <laughs> after like it's five very episodes. formulaic but she's super funny but she's I, funny I, as a person yeah yeah her personality is funny, and it kind of holds that show because she's going on to some really well tread tread on territory at this point. I mean, when you're making jokes that are no more like interesting than jokes that uh, than Joan Rivers made in like the '70s. <laughs> Joan Rivers is a pretty edgy comic, actually, for her time and even today, actually. Yeah. But um. Well, no, now she just does like Fashion Police, which yeah. is kind of like. Which is something I think she just fell into and just. just kept doing it. Her, her, became... her and her daughter, Melissa. Yeah, and then she just became synonymous with red carpet fashion shows. Like, yeah. Because she did it probably as as like a hired on comedian at, one, at when she first started doing right. it, you know? And I guess maybe she's considered fashionable, I suppose. I don't know. All that uh, plastic surgery, I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> All that money into it. Yeah. You should be a fashion icon. God You should it. be. You paid for it. Yeah. You paid your way. I actually don't mind Joan Rivers. What do you think of Joan Rivers? I don't mind her either. There's a really good documentary, actually, that was made a couple years ago. 
about her. And it follows her around? Yeah. I saw clips of it, but I never got to see the full thing. Actually, really good. Well, you'll have to show it to me, because I never got to see the full thing. Made me like Joan Rivers more. Yeah, I grew I grew up in my house, and whenever Joan Rivers was on, she never got turned off. I don't know if anyone really liked her, but I don't think she bothered anyone in the house, so I kind of didn't yeah. mind her from... Well, early. her stand-up is really good, like the 70s and 80s stand-up and stuff. It's actually really good, like the Johnny Carson era stuff, um, and a lot of people know this, I suppose, if you know Joan Rivers, is that she was the permanent stand-in for a long time for Johnny Carson. Yep. So whenever he would go on vacation, she would guest host the show. Which is kind of, that's a big deal if you really think of it. So, I mean, she must have been, I know, she, I mean, I know she was pretty popular, but. Yeah, I think she's, oh, she still is, at least with the E! community, the E! channel. Is she? Yeah, she, they have a whole show now, or week to week. It's not even just for fashion, like, award shows anymore. It's called the Fashion Police. That's on there now? Yeah. Oh, and it's I her and, like, yeah. Kelly Osborne and then two other people, and they just, like, shit make talk fun, yeah, and she, make fun of, like, or, like, praise people's, like, attire at different, like, premieres or award shows, depending on... But it's I think it's a weekly show now. It's called Fashion Police. Oh, wow. I was not aware of this. Yeah, Kelly Osborne with her, like, weird pastel hair. Does she? I, I have not seen Kelly Osborne in the years. Like, I don't even know what she looks She's like anymore. She's skinny and has, I... like, pastel purple hair. Mmm. Yeah. Pretty edgy stuff there, Kelly and Osborne. More, more tattoos. Papa don't preach. Oh, yeah, I forgot she did that. <laughs> I remember she did that cover of Papa Don't Preach. No, I remember her song, what was it, Shut Up. Oh, I never heard it. I, and the only she one just I goes for part Papa of it, she just goes, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, because for the time, like, when Kelly Osbourne, when that song came out, all the rock stations gave that, played that song because she was, you know, Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne's, Osbourne's daughter. daughter. Yeah. And really for no other reason. I don't know if they played it ironically or not. I don't think they did it at first. I think they kept playing it afterwards as a point of like ridicule. Yeah. Because it's fucking retarded. Like it's not. It's not even. It's not like incompetent or anything like that. What the? I don't know. Maybe the, the song's only okay in the first place. But like, people trying to extrapolate some sort of depth why she picked that song and stuff. It was like, come on. Yeah, I know. I I don't know. I wasn't super into Kelly Osbourne. I watched the Osbournes. Yeah, that was the show. first, one of those, the first, like, kind of cultural... Surreal... Points of, yeah. of these kind of reality shows. Celebrity-focused reality shows, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, so, no more Hulu. Is, are you, are you over, because I don't, I'm kind of indifferent about, like, not having it. I, I think I would like it, because there were a few shows we started to watch week to week, like Master Chef. Master Chef, yeah, that was actually, I was like, oh, we could watch new Master Chef, and I was like, oh, no, we can't. Yeah, like, so once we got into the groove of finding shows we liked, and even though I don't, like, I, you know, we, we are marathoners, yeah. you know what I mean? We like to marathon and sit down. It is nice sometimes to be like, oh, it's Thursday, this episode's available, we can watch it. I never joined the rest of these, the dregs of society with this week-to-week -week watching. Oh. Which is, so, I, I know, it's something I'm just not accustomed to anymore, because I, I've pretty much just stopped watching TV, unless it was like, on Netflix, or I went no. out of my way to buy a season of something or something like that. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, it was kind of nice to be, like, on Fridays, be like, oh, the new Master Chef is up, like, let's check that out. Yeah. Like, so we don't, we don't have to keep watching the same things or watching things we've already seen, like, 80 times. Yeah. Which well, is typically what we do with, like you were saying, with Netflix and you, you end up watching stuff that you've already seen, so. Yeah, I mean, which, but it's, which is, it's cool and it's not, I mean, because the cool thing about it is, like, I'm revisiting a lot of movies that I probably wouldn't have thought to watch again. Yeah. Uh, funnily enough, I actually own most of those movies yeah. that I watch on Netflix. You're too lazy to get them off the shelf. Yeah. Actually, last night it was different, though, because I watched Event Horizon, and then I went and found my DVD and then watched, started watching it with commentary as I went to bed. Oh, did you? I was yeah. asleep. One of the, it's like, I don't know. That movie just fascinates me because it's like one of the greatest like missed opportunities in like sci science fiction horror ever. Well, when I saw it before I fell asleep, it was pretty good. I That's the best part of the movie is the first 45 minutes, and then it falls apart because of the direction they took. And apparently there's a, I read there's an article on the blog, if you'd like to read it, uh, about that they found uh, the original cut of the movie, and they're, uh, there's rumors that they're going to restore it and then release like the director's cut. And I'm actually, I would actually be totally into that because that, be that movie you could easily fix that movie and make it like something like really really awesome really great i just got excited that uh morpheus was in it yeah Lawrence fishburne <laughs> and sam neill yeah one of your favorites Dr. Grant. yeah 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know. That's about it with watching stuff. Well, because we were kind of like super into Hulu for a while, and then we kind of stopped using Netflix. For yeah, because it gets to the point where you click on Netflix just to click on Netflix and be like, whoa, this is on here now? <laughs> like, at least yeah, I did. Yeah, which is actually uh, ended up stumbling across uh, the first our, my uh, streaming recommendation that we watched on the Netflix. Yep. Uh, Antiviral. Antiviral is directed by Brandon Cronenberg, son of David Cronenberg. Riding on Daddy's coattails. The old maple, maple syrup loving Canuck himself. Uh, yeah, so antiviral, it's like, it's very much follows in David Cronenberg's footsteps. Like, really hardcore. Mm-hmm. I didn't think that was, I thought it stood on its own just fine. I didn't think find that to be detrimental. Honestly, like, I think, like, if somebody else had made this and it wasn't, didn't, he, his last name wasn't Cronenberg. Yeah. I still would have liked the movie. Yeah, I like the movie. I, I don't think it, it, it affects one way or the other, like, my ultimate, like, enjoyment of it at the end of the day. The coattails thing was a joke. No, I know that. <laughs> no, I know that, but I think a lot of people would do that, are going to hold this movie up to David Cronenberg. <laughs> I think a lot of, like, more finicky movie snobs are going to be a little weird about it. And I think they have been, because this movie is not like super well reviewed or liked really by like the community not necessarily reviews themselves like actually professional movie journalists yeah but like to like just the science fiction crowd not universally loved really i thought it was fine yeah i mean i wrote a also on the blog i wrote a really long article like review and analysis of like some of the themes in the movie and stuff like that but that's like the thing about that movie it's. I really like that movie a lot, but I don't think it's a great movie. I think like the concept is much more interesting than the plot. Yeah. In fact, the, the plot is like almost an afterthought. Like even to the movie itself. There are parts towards the end where I the plot was kind of lost to me. Like I kind of was yeah, like, wait, what exactly is going yeah. on right now? Like in your and, and it kind of gets clarified, but I felt like towards especially towards the last, I'd say like forty minutes, it was just kind of like. Well, that's the thing, like, it's, it becomes increasingly more obtuse, and then, while, like, the movie sets up, like, the, the world and the universe and, like, the concept very well, it doesn't, like, the plot is based in the minutia of how the science works, and they never really do a very good job of explaining it, and they never really do a good job of explaining, like, who's the interests at play, because that like at the in the last, like, 15 minutes of the movie, you discover an entirely different new angle, Yeah, which is interesting. Um, and it's more of, I guess, maybe the, one of those things. Maybe if you know, if you were to rewatch it, you'd be able to like pick up some more stuff that like that were seeded into the, throughout the movie. Um, like I kind of had figured what was going to happen at the end. Hap- well, to a certain degree, I had figured like that there was going to be like a third twist. Yeah. Which the movie does do, um, but not. But I didn't know the exact like exactly what was going to happen. The exact direction. It's definitely like it keeps you guessing and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it feels confused, and it, then you're kind of don't even understand like okay is this happening linearly like is this linear or are there spliced time like or is this time shit all over the place like no that is a fair question and i think some of it is and some of it isn't like so it gets confused or even between dreams and waking states and well that stuff i i feel it was done on purpose like the dream stuff like no i know but opposed to his reality and stuff but no but sometimes that got kind of like messy for me at least it was visually really pretty though it's got a fantastic aesthetic design. It really does, yeah. um, and it's a, and it works within its means too, because it's a, obviously a pretty low budget movie. It's like shot in the streets of Toronto, like very clearly, uh, but they make it work. Indians. Yeah, they love Toronto. <laughs> Actually, most American film studios love Toronto too. Doubles is a fantastic double for New York City. Um, no, but like it's it's it does a really good job of just using like the natural environments around them. And nothing is like too crazy. Like there's no like crazy CGI. It's all pretty. Pra- it's all practical effects. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's some really shocking, great like body horror image stuff that makes you kind of just uncomfortable. I cringed a couple times. Oh yeah, me too. Especially, I mean, just the very concept of the movie, which is like the concept is like people buying celebrity diseases and taking them into themselves to like kind of complete themselves in a way. And have, have a part of the celebrity in them. Yeah. It's a, it's it's one of those movies that like reinforces maybe like feelings I already have about society. Yeah. And about how like celebrity obsessed culture we have and stuff like that. Um and there's actually because of Hulu Plus, 
We were seeing this fucking People magazine ad, like, <laughs> maybe 40 times a day. Yeah, because they have the same, like, five commercials, yeah. depending on the show you're watching. We mentioned that in the last podcast. Um, it's this People magazine ad, and it's, like, uh, the song, like, You're Amazing, Just the Way You Are. And it's all just pictures of celebrities and stuff like that. And it's, like, it, like, speaks to some of the themes of the movie, actually. Yeah, I didn't think of that until you said that. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. But it's, like, super direct. Yeah. Like, really succinctly, like, oh, my God, that is what, this is what this movie's talking about. This is how people are, like, made to want to feel, right? Yeah, they have the eyes that make the stars look like they ain't shining. Hey. That's so bad I know the words now. Uh, this is, yeah, but antiviral, I, I think it's totally worth your time. If you're a fan of David Cronenberg's work, or if you're a fan of just cerebral dystopian science fiction, um, and there's some really fantastic, like, gross concepts in here, like, like the celebrity cell stakes, like, where they're taking, like, tissue samples from these celebrities <laughs> and, like, growing these, like, basic steak, like, food. Yeah, it's like a butcher shop. Yeah, and people are buying them and eating them. And it's, like, it's, it's really, it's really great. And, but, uh, yeah. I, that made me want to kind of throw up a little bit. Cause it was, was the grossest part of the movie to me. Like, I can deal with the, the needles and, like, the injections. And, and blood and, and stuff. And blood and shit. But, like, when you're talking about, like, like, that, that growing, level of... Growing a, the muscle tissue yeah. of, of a person and then ingesting it. Yeah. I don't know, what did you think? Do you think this movie takes, like, a hard moral stance? I, I think it does, but it doesn't force it on you. Yeah. It doesn't beat you over the head with the message. I think it's very... It's just a good commentary on it. Yeah. I, I it maybe so. tells you to, like, take it in the back and, like, kind of, like, look at what's going on around us kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I, I felt the but same But it doesn't... Way. I don't feel like it beats you over the head with it, or it's not very, like... No, Obvi it, it's not very obvious. Yeah, it's, it's not leading it's, you to a conclusion. It's very subtle. Yeah. Yeah. It's very subtle, and I, I mean, I think if it does have, and I talk about this a little bit in my article, is that if it is falling down on anybody, it's it's falling down on, like, the peddlers. It's, it's not, it doesn't blame society. It actually blames people that, like, major companies that noticed, that like, propagate that the, propagate this and, like, yeah. put these people up on pedestals and, like, tell people they need this to be better people. And, um, and actually I thought it took a, like, cause there's, it goes after corporatism, but it also goes after the black market and it maybe makes them even a little worse Yep. because they're on the ground level with the people that are suffering as a consequence of this and they're doing it anyways. Like, I think like, you know, if you're part of the corporate structure, you, you know, you just, for an example, you like, you exist on some type of ivory tower and there's probably a level of like plausible deniability to what you're doing because you never really face, have to face, face it you don't face on. your client at all no it's all it's all like abstract stuff yeah, maybe it's you a trickle see, down you see shit on the news and stuff like that but it's not real until it's in your back backyard I guess and the black market people are like yeah it's here and we're gonna exploit it even more because right. like there's the element where the celebrity diseases are like the high end stuff and then the cell stakes are like the shit end like where anybody can make these things yeah um so I don't know. It was just interesting. It's a very interesting movie. Uh, honestly, we could probably talk about th that movie this entire time, but probably we'll, probably won't do it. It was a long movie, but actually, no, no, it's, it's only an hour and a half. It's oh. like eighty-six minutes long. Really? I think so. Yeah. I thought it was longer than that. Mm -hmm. Oh. No. It's short and succinct. They probably could have used twenty more minutes to make some stuff at the last like third of the movie a little bit more clear. Oh. If it I, if it I were felt to say long, it. not in a bad way. Just... No, no, it, it's it's definitely paced very methodically. Like, yeah. it's bordering on slow. Yeah. But never... I never was never bored. I was always just very fascinated no, what, by what was going on. That's what I mean. It felt like it was longer, but not in a bad way. Not where I was like, is yeah. this ending now? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, other Can movies. Can we get back to Hell... Oh, shut up. <laughs> Can we start walking? Can we just finish Hell's Kitchen? God. No. no. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's a big recommend for me, anyway. Yeah, I recommend it to you. I don't know. And also, uh, which you just started watching today, Ken Burns' Prohibition. Yeah. Um, I found that on Netflix. Yeah, that's on Netflix. And actually, Netflix, I think, has most of Ken Burns' like, series. Yeah, they, he has, they have the jazz one, and I really want to watch that. I started it with you, actually, when we still lived in Maryland. But yeah. I, it's something I really want to watch, because he a long does a lot with my... It's like four hours. He no, does it's like 11 hours. It's is 11, it 11 hours? I think it's 11-part series. Oh, is it? Like, Civil War is like 12 parts... Baseball is like ten parts. Oh, prohibition well, is only three parts. Because the thing with his stuff, like the parts, they're like movie length. I mean, they're an hour and a half. It's because I think most of them are PBS. They are, like, yeah. He just made them however long you wanted to make them. It's like to service purpose, like to make it the way you wanted to make it. 
Yeah, I want to watch the Jazz one, though, because he did a lot with, like, Miles Davis, and I love Miles Davis, so I'm sure there's going to be a really big focus on Miles Davis. No, not really. He, I mean, like, he touches on Miles Davis as part of it. Like, part of, like, the movement and what happened. No, I understand. It's probably well done. He wrote a really good bi- uh, biography on him that I love. I know. So, I, so I was just curious to see what I would see in that series. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's fine. No, but the prohibition was just I got I was born. I was like, oh, I'll listen to Ken Burns' documentary, whatever. Yeah. you know, series. fantastic narrator Pete Wolf. Jeremy Irons did a voiceover too. John Lithgow did a voice too. Wow. All right. Mm-hmm. But it's been really good because it's like a balanced history of the prohibition. prohibition. But and like the first part that we watched, the because we've only watched the first part, focuses entirely on the lead up to prohibition. Yep. Becoming a uh, part of a, like a constitutional amendment, and like all the different facets of it. Facets, yeah, like against it and for you know for it, and mm-hmm. like where they were coming from, what sex of society it was affecting, and how it was affecting them, and how it was being used. Yeah, and... or the just preconception. Yeah, that it was affecting society negatively, like as much as they say, uh, because and there's some really interesting like things that they touch upon, like things that you might not think of, I, I suppose. Uh, like, just, like, how it was in school books, in school, like, the evils of alcohol and stuff like that. I mean, to the level of, like, reefer madness yeah. comedic effect. I mean, like, honestly, I mean, that's hindsight, but that's... Yeah, that one it. video they showed, that one movie that was released, yeah. No, not the movie, the, uh, well, they also had that propaganda movie, but the, uh, in the school books, the textbooks, like, about, like, if you had, you could spontaneously combust, and oh, yeah, if you and had the one pictures. drink, you could eat, eat away your stomach lining. Yeah, with the and, pictures of the gross stomachs Yeah, just stuff. like they do for anti-smoking, like, classes and stuff like that, basically. Yeah. Which, smoking probably has a little bit more of a leg of being immediately bad for you, but yeah. scientifically proven at this point. Or maybe not, maybe it's all propaganda. Who knows? Oh my god. Uh, no, but also, just, I didn't real I did not know this, that, uh, Prohibition, the movement, was what led to income tax. Bastards. I didn't, I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't either. Like, it's, it's crazy when you watch something like that, and especially in the way that, like, he puts it in such broad historical context, because, like, a lot of things, like, when you want to talk about a subject, like, people just focus on that subject entirely. But he focuses on, like, how... The, the wider implications of that, like, of just that, like, prohibition as a concept and, like, what was happening in the country and how all, all these things kind of tie into each other, all these different movements and all these different, like, income tax becoming a thing. I actually wish he kind of delved deeper in because he kind of pays lip service to it and then moves on uh, because that's not the focus of the film, I understand. Film, right, but, so he can't really chase down those rabbit holes. Yeah, because that's something to me is, like, super interesting. Um, well, something you could look into yourself. I suppose. Why, why? I want Ken Burns just to make a documentary for me to watch about it. Watch uh, but it was it's interesting. It's interesting how it's tied with, like, women's liberation and, like, feminism. I like seeing all the pictures. That's actually, yeah, one of my favorite parts of it, yeah. Seeing all... And then get, you get really sad when you watch them bust all the beer barrels in the street. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> or it's just, like, that's... I don't know. People... I, I really enjoy just, like pictures like i really like even if i didn't know a person i would love to like look through people's like family photo albums and shit like that weirdo i would just because like they're so much like people have so much character and they tell you so much about themselves in photographs without even like realizing that's what they're doing yeah but like the way they hold themselves and if they smile or not or the way their faces and like there's just like entire like histories so they say a picture is worth a thousand words it's true i think so too yeah and that's probably one of the most fast like entertaining aspects of that documentary but it also puts you in that place and time I think really effectively yeah instead of just watch like panning to different historians talking about the time yeah it's mostly very rarely do they do that it's mostly just uh, I mean they do every once in a while but it's only for like a minute yeah and then they just can uh, even when those people are talking these historians and these theologians showing and stuff vid- are talking yeah talking vi- showing videos or yeah they're photos. showing over photos and stuff yeah. and um, I just I like that it's very immersive actually um, I don't know. Do you think people would find that dry? I think if you do, you probably like you must be have the mentality of a twelve year old. But yeah, I don't. I don't find especially the way it's paced and everything. I think it's fine. Like, yeah, it doesn't like. Well, I used to watch these kind of things when I was a kid because I <coughs> watched a lot of PBS. Yeah, and I used to really love like Nova. When I was a kid, I really loved Charlie Rose. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. I watched. <laughs> 
Well, the first Charlie it's Rose. All making that, sense now. One of the first things I ever watched was Charlie Rose's interview with like a uh, of Charlie Rose was his interview of um, John Leguizamo, <laughs> and he was talking about uh, Freaked, like that his state his one man stage, stage show. show yeah, it's like three hours long. It's actually really good, but it's like his autobiography basically. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and ever since then I was like, man, Charlie Rose is pretty sweet. But when I was a kid, I'd get really bummed when it was just like. Like statisticians and shit, because you know he has a pretty eclectic like yeah. group of people. Yeah. But later in, in later years, he's focused more on like the arts and film and stuff like that. But before, he used to be like statisticians and like uh, politicians and be political like, scientists. And be like, I'll watch this anyway. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess maybe I I'm a little bit more okay with things that are a little on the drier side. I don't find it dry. Yeah. And I don't have I have attention span than that. Yeah, that's true. This is very true. <laughs> I'll face very small bug yes yeah. uh but yeah i would i would say that i mean i've been a fan of ken burns anyways before i'd never seen prohibition i've seen a few others i saw jazz i saw uh I, civil war and i think i've seen some of baseball um but he's got like he's just i like the way he goes about things and i like that he takes exactly as much time as he needs with them like i don't ever feel like it's rushed right. i think like or he's like an, harping on something for forever. No, he doesn't. He's very yeah. he's very non judgmental. I, I would say. No, it's very it's very even keeled. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, very much so. So yeah, you should watch Ken Burns documentaries because uh, you will learn something and possibly be entertained. Hey, yeah, you laugh a little bit at some of the stuff. Like I laughed at the free lunch thing. They were describing how the breweries used to. Oh, the pubs. Or yeah, the, the pub. Bars, well, the, yeah. the the pubs were owned by the breweries, and what they would do to sell more of their beer was you would get like salami, like saltines, saltines like and very sardines. salty, sar yeah. yeah, very salty foods. But you got a free lunch. You just buy beer, and those were all salty things that made you buy more beer. Yeah, no, it's Mart. It's like just so. There's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't think I don't think buying a beer was a prerequisite to you actually getting a free lunch, though. No, it wasn't. No. But it was people like, did it anyway. Because, like, it's one of those interesting things also, like, you know, because, you know, there's part of it, it focuses on the negative side of, like, this, what alcoholism just does to people and, and like, the, the bar culture that was kind of maybe not always positive. But then it also flipped it over and, like, but, yeah, but there's a really important community aspect and about, like, actually being growing and being successful a lot of it happened with like the connections people would make and stuff all happened inside bars and it's like the place for men to blow steam and blah well, blah, blah and people would also find like city jobs like get city that's what i mean jobs. Yeah. yeah no i'm just saying like that's you know it was just part of the community and especially at the time and they you know he briefly mentions this as well it's like the uh, immigrants you know that's where immigrants you go to this new city and you just move there and you have nothing like where do you want to go meet people from where you're from probably go to a bar and where do you want to learn the language probably at a bar from drunken dirty men at a bar yeah so it's it, it's it, like i mean we could just keep talking about it just to that as well like probably for the whole thing i mean just because it goes into all these different really interesting areas that you can further extrapolate things yourself and yeah. like and and really it i feel like it's done right in the way that i feel like it's having a conversation with me rather than dictating to me yeah, because I think that's really boring, and the fact that they have like actors come in to read journal entries and letters and stuff is also also adds to it, adds to the, some character, gives it some character. If so it's not my man Pete Wolf. Just you know, what? that's the narrator's name, Peter Wolf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> Who are you he's like one of those about? guys. He's like in tons of fucking movies, and I can never. The only one I can think of, I know you haven't seen. What? He's like, he's in the movie Sphere. No, I haven't seen yeah. that. With Dustin Hoffman, Samuel L. Jackson, and Sharon Stone. Based on the novel by Michael Crichton. Never. Sphere. Coming out summer of 1997. Oh, I know. I've never seen that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. I think, like, it's one of those things that's like, wow, that's why Netflix is worth eight bucks a month. I mean, it's worth it on top of that, but it's just like, there's so much good shit on there. It just reminded me, and maybe being the Hulu ghetto, I'm almost, I'm almost slightly relieved to be free of it. I do not like, like, most TV shows that are on there. Do you really just call it a ghetto? The Hulu ghetto? Oh my. Of television? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, Sean. In the classical sense, Sarah. 
You know exactly what I'm not making a racial <laughs> statement. I know. <laughs> but there is probably a lot of shows that black people would enjoy. Bazing. It's a joke. Calm down, everybody. That's where the Jews go to. That's where the Jews are. Oh, wow, it's what the meaning of that's where the meaning of the original ghettos is. It's yes. the neighborhood they put the Jews in. Anyways. <laughs> Hulu Plus is a media and cultural ghetto. Tonight on Fox. <laughs> Tonight on Hannity. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you think they're all terrorists? Yeah, I think they're all terrorists. I think we should blow them all up. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I think it's really good. I can't wait to start part two. So, c neither can I. And we can do it without having Hulu slowing us down. Oh, my <laughs> God. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, on to our, our first... T-Man Hulu hater. Oh! Our first, like, uh, I guess, focused discussion here. We'll see how focused it is. Uh, we finally got around to watching the new Star Trek movie. Star Trek Into Darkness. Into the Darkness. Into... There wasn't too much darkness. No, there wasn't. <laughs> it's pretty well lit. Spoilers. Pretty well lit movie, guys. Spoilers. Looks like it cost a lot of money and was made by a major studio. Yes. Surprise. This can't be a summer blockbuster without stuff blowing up and, like, getting knocked down. Well, that's the thing. Like, you, like me, you like the first Star Trek. Yes. The, the reboot, right? Yeah. I, I, I was almost taken aback how much I enjoyed that movie. Did not expect to, to like that movie as much as I did. I, don't, I think someone bought me a ticket to go to that, and I was like, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I actually ended up seeing it twice in the theater, because I saw it once by myself. I'm not even a big Star Trek fan. Like, I'm just more of a new movie nerd. And that was like, I was bored. I was like, oh, fuck it. Opening night. Nobody wants to go. Fuck you guys. I'll go. <laughs> so I went. And then my friend was like, hey, what was that movie? I was like, it was actually, dude, it was actually really good. You want to go? Yeah, all right. <laughs> so I'm going to see it again. But, um, yeah, so that's, uh, like, under like, understand that they're not, like, it's like, it wasn't like a perfect movie. It was okay. It's like really entertaining action adventure movie. Yeah, it was. It was, like, fine. It's fun. It was... Very good cast, like, very likable characters. As always. Yeah, it's superficially, like, really entertaining. Except you and I couldn't stop calling them Robocop and Judge Dredd. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the no. first one. Oh, the first one. Yeah, we're still talking about the first one. Oh. How we feel about the first one, setting up how we're going to feel about the second one. Oh, I didn't mind the second one that much. It was okay. Eh. Eh. It was okay. I mean, like, the first one's dumb. This one's really dumb. Yeah. Like... I didn't mind it, though. I didn't mind it either. Like, I would say, like, I'm fine with it. I watched it. I and it was entertained. But, like, as soon as the movie was over, I was like, this, that was really dumb. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't go... We waited. Yeah, I'm glad we waited, too. Because you can, like, if you have digital services or, I think, Amazon, PS3, um, it comes out, like, a week before... A week or two before it comes out in uh, Blu-ray and stuff. So that's how we watched it. But, like, um... Yeah, I don't know, like, I didn't feel that way after I watched the first one. Maybe it's just I'm a little bit more discerning, even in, like, yeah, these past couple years or whatever. Because I was like, this, uh, I would never watch it again. Yeah, I'm fine not watching it again, but I yeah. also didn't, I didn't mind it either. It was entertaining. I wasn't offended. Like, some people found that movie to be offensive. And, like, to be like, really? this is what's wrong with Hollywood. I was like, oh, man, you gotta the, watch some more movies. Trekkies? Trekkies... Trekkies give... They gave the first one a pass because of how much fun it is. Yeah. What about the this? second one, a lot of people didn't like the second one because they fucked with Khan. Khan! They were like, why did you have Khan? Yeah. Which I think is fine, in my opinion, because just like the first one, it's all just a series of references to the other original series. Yeah. And characters and, and events. Like, it's a series of references to that shit. Like, so why did you, why would you expect the second one to be, like, this wholly original fucking masterpiece? Instead, I don't know. Instead, some people think it's a disaster piece. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, I was entertained, but I would never watch it again. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I don't know. Peter Weller and Carl Ur Carl, Carl Urban. <laughs> and Carl Urban, Peter Weller of Robocop fame, Carl Ur Urban. You can't of, say his name. <laughs> of, uh... Pathfinder fame? No, I'm just kidding. Of uh, Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd. 
That's what I kept calling them last time. Like, no, Judge Dredd. The movie that nobody saw. <laughs> that they should have seen. That you should have seen. And now maybe you will. All um, five of you. With every mention of Dredd, Judge Dredd in any type, or Dredd in any media, podcast, review, YouTube video series, an angel gets its wings. Dread, dread, dread. Stop giving them wings. You're welcome. They gotta earn that. Oh, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I like the cast. Like, that's probably kept me going the most. Like, the characters are. Even the arc that Kirk and uh, Spock, Spock go through yeah. is the same arc they went through From in the, the first, first one. Movie. The no. same lesson they learn. We should, you know, I appreciate you. We should, I'm just the way you are. We balance each other out just fine. Yeah, man, we're like destined to be best friends. High five. But damn. But yeah, so like, as far as like all those things, it's like, well, been there, done that already. Simon Pegg was fantastic. He was fine. He was comic relief. Zero character. Like, just there to do the Scotty voice. They and, should just be the Scotty the movie. And run around. It seems, like, just really undercooked, like, really anemic. Like, not a lot actually happens. No, they didn't accomplish much. No. It was, like, three major things. Two hours and ten minutes of, yeah, and three, like, things happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's good when you think about it. Yeah. Not a whole lot, hell of a lot happens. And, like, the characters are not super consistent. Kirk is really, like, this characterization of Kirk is super inconsistent. Like, is he, like, the gruff, like, rough and tough, noble, like, hero? Or is he an asshole? Like, the movie can't seem like it can make, make its up mind. up mind up. Like, yeah. the beginning. When they have that thing, they're running from this tribe of people when they're on this planet just... trying to save this indigenous people. And he's running, and he has this scroll in his hand. Oh, yeah, which and, they and, never explain. And they never explain why he grabbed it or anything like that. Like, why would he grab it in the first place? So, like, you know, Bones, Bones Dread, Urban, is like, what is that? He's like, I don't know, but they were worshipping it. They were bowing down uh-huh. to her. And then they run. And then he just drops it. And then he just puts it into a tree so they can make their escape, which makes me wonder, why'd you grab it in the first place? You weren't even supposed to let people know you were there. It just doesn't... It's just stupid. It He's doesn't make greedy. any sense. He's greedy. Uh, the plot with Khan and what he wants to accomplish and stuff, while it makes sense, is kind of dumb. Uh, Mr. Know, Cumberbatch. Mr. Cumberbatch, who I actually uh, like. I really like his, his, um, his Sherlock Holmes. I haven't watched that. It's really good. I would recommend it. I'm making lots of recommends in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, making a lot of recommends. Yeah. It's uh, Sherlock is uh, the first two series are on Netflix. Also, kind of done similar to Ken Burns style, where uh, each episode is about film length. So there's like three movies a season, basically. Really? Yeah. Very cool. That's very good, actually. Yeah, my old roommate used to watch Sherlock all the time. She told me I'd like it, so... It's a great, like, update of that character, because it sticks to, like, the ethos of who these characters are, like, uh, are, uh, Watson, and, and, and actually calls a lot from the actual uh, novels themselves, huh. as far as characterization goes and stuff. Well, maybe I'll have to check that out now that we only have Netflix. Oh, no. Might make you watch something that'll... <laughs> you know, when I'm watching TV, I should be trashy sometimes. Oh, God, sometimes. Ain't I? Oh, shut up. Ain't I? Who picked Ken Burns today? I did. You did. So shut your mouth. What was I doing when you picked Ken Burns? I don't even know. Yeah, that's right. Looking at hardcore interracial pornography. Probably. Boom. With your <laughs> headphones on. So I don't know, Sarah. Final thoughts about Star Trek in the Darkness. It's, I don't even really want to talk about it. It's fucking... It's, it's um, what, it is what it is. Like, it's... I think kids would like it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's, like, dark and serious in the way that 12-year-olds would find impactful. Like my stepbrother. You think so? I think Michael would like it. Because of all the ship battles and... Well, I will say that it does have some pretty decent action. Give it that. It has, some good, it has some, a few good set pieces. It does, actually. Yeah. Uh, even, like, the, the raid on the ship at the end is pretty decent. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not, probably not going to watch again either, so... No, I, I can't see my... I mean... It's a movie where if you... It's a rainy day. You have nothing else to do. You have access to it. Go ahead. It's one of those movies you end up watching on TBS sometime in the future. It's like a TBS film. That, like, yeah. That they'll show, like, four times in a day. Yeah, and you're too lazy to get up. <laughs> there you go. I don't even know if that, that kind of world exists anymore, actually. Yeah, it does, but it's with, like, shows now. It's with, like, the CSI shows. Like, USA, that's, like... They have their own shows... 
But during the daytime and, like, early evening, all of the shows, like, CSI and NCIS. Oh, and, I know that. Yeah. But with movies, no. No, and I mean, like, remember, like, I don't even know if that kind of culturally is something that people even do anymore. Oh. Like, wait. you know, hanging out on a Saturday and, you, and you're and you just on the fucking couch and it's hot and sweaty and you put, like, TBS on because watch- Shawshank's on, like, and it's halfway through and then you end up just watching the two movies that are after it that are always very mediocre. I don't think so. Maybe to a point, like, people who don't have things like Netflix. Because nowadays people will be on their laptops or their iPads or their Netflix or... Cellular devices. Yeah, these cell phones that are like little computers, I swear to God! They are. It's crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah. Eh. I don't even know if those people exist, if that's a thing anymore. We can make it a thing. We we do make it a thing. Sarah. I know. <laughs> we did. Hulu Plus showed us that. So I guess maybe it is. It's just it's evolved. It's taken this. This beast has grown another head. Oh lord. Oh my god. Sharpen the blades. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I I think I would agree with you that it's like this movie would be like is built for twelve year olds. Yeah, who maybe aren't familiar with. Star Trek? I don't even think you have to be familiar with Star Trek. I no, think this movie just, I really wasn't. I know. I don't think you have to be. I don't. I th- see. I think the first one just works as like a really fun, thrilling adventure movie, and I think the second one tries to recreate the same thing by almost telling you the same character stories. The plots are different, but the character stories are the same, and it just doesn't do it as well. Like I was never as captivated or as excited while I was watching this movie. I was almost bored at some. Yeah, we points. were talking. <laughs> yeah, we <just laughs> which started... we usually don't do if we're watching something new. Chit chatting a little bit like while we're watching it because it's just like I don't know. Didn't demand my full attention. No. Nope. And I can watch a lot of things like and just yeah. better bad. I can. Sometimes. Um but yeah. I don't know. I'd say if you're young or you have kids or whatever or you're just curious, check out Star Trek, but you'll never watch it again. I guarantee you that. You'll never watch that movie again. Because why would you suffer that? I wouldn't. Why would you put that on yourself, man? you got enough problems. Come on. So what are we going to talk about next? Oh, the last movie we saw in a theater. In a theater. Kick-Ass 2. Kick-Ass 2, which... I got some thoughts. I got some thoughts, too. What are your thoughts on Kick-Ass 2? Lame-Ass 2. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not a very cohesive movie at all. I really, I never saw the first one until you showed it to me. Really enjoyed it. Thought it was decent. So I was kind of excited for this one. See like where the characters have gone since the last one. I was excited to see how they were going to add the new heroes. And it's a mess. It's As a movie, it's a mess. I think it's successful in continuing character journeys. Um, at least for Hit Girl. Yeah. That's, it's, it should have been uh, Hit Girl the movie. It should have been. pretty much. That's pretty much what it is. Um, actually, after we watched the movie, I ended up reading both of the comics, which I oh. don't really like either of them, actually. Really? I did not like even the first one. And what it did to me, it showed me what the difference between Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2, the movies were. Yeah. Was that Kick-Ass, the first one, they changed a ton of shit, and they made that story work. Yeah. And the comic book does not. Like, the comic book story is just so surface level, just shit. Huh. And then in Kick-Ass 2, they basically straight up adapted the comic book. That's why even... Because we were talking about it after we got out of the movie, I felt like... It feels like it's broken up into like 15, 20 minute segments that each encompass like an issue. And, and it's that exact, what, that's was, exactly what, was, what it was. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, because the characterizations and everything are just as thin as they are in the comic book. The comic book does not give these people any personality. Kick-Ass is the only one that gets any type of development. And then, actually, the thing they added for Kick-Ass 2 was they gave uh, Chloe Moritz Grace's character, Hicker, they gave her an actual arc. She has no arc in the comic book. Which is funny, because I feel like Kick-Ass's arc in the movie was lacking. It's the same arc he has in the first movie. Yeah. It is. And then, when the movie starts to make a point in the last ten minutes, you're like, well, why wasn't this the whole focus of the whole movie? About, like, our existence actually breeds supervillains, and that's why it should have just, like, you know, they should have just, okay, take this concept from Kick-Ass 2, the graphic novel, or the comic book series. And run with it. And did something different with it. Like, they should have, like, the League of Villains, or the Toxic Mega Cunts, or whatever the hell they, they the motherfuckers, themselves. like, crew is, should have been established, like, within the first 20 minutes of the movie, just like Kick-Ass joining, 
Justice Forever, like yeah. the group, superhero right. group, and then juxtapose like the two. And like and how one informed the other as far as like escalation of violence. No, I agree. It does a better job than the comic book does actually. Because I mean, huh. the comic book is like that anemic. That makes me not want to read it. It's not worth reading. I was surprised. It was terrible. I mean, I don't even know if I've read anything else that Mark Miller's Millar has ever written. I never read Wanted. I read the only thing I know I that I started Wanted and didn't get very far. Yeah, I never even bothered. I started, uh, oh no, I read uh, Superman Red Sun, the one where it's like a reimagining of Superman if he was a communist. Actually pretty interesting. Huh. Um, because it makes a commentary basically about, like, Superman is whoever he was raised to be. You know, like, so it just makes makes that kind I'll of check that out. commentary about Superman. Um, so it's interesting. But, like, yeah, but Kick-Ass 2 is, it, it was a mess, like you said. The pace, I just, like, had no pace. It was, like, dead on arrival the whole time. It was weird. Yeah, I was kind of bummed we didn't wait for that one. Yeah, because we paid good money to go see that film. <laughs> we paid modern-day movie ticket prices to go see that. Even at a matinee, you're spending almost 20 bucks. And then popcorn, god damn. Yeah, and all these other things. <laughs> and it was another thing. That movie is only 90 minutes long. I felt like we were in the theater for, like, three hours. Yeah, my favorite reaction to the movie was the lady whose husband made her go, and she found the, like, the theater manager after her, and she was like, the first one was cute, this was shit, and then she was like, it was so stupid, and then he made me sit through the whole fucking credits just to see that end scene, and what was that? So stupid. <laughs> I was just like, I kind of feel you, lady. Yeah, a little bit. And I usually hate when people are like that in the movie theater, but I was like, yeah, <laughs> all right, lady. I mean, I have, a, I have kind of a weird thing with it, because I recognized how bad it was. Yeah. I can't say that I regret watching it. Yeah, it I I kind of enjoyed aspects of it. Like, there were scenes that I liked. There's stuff in it that I, I understood what they were trying to do, and then watching them fail, getting it across. But I yeah. knew what they meant. Um, but, I mean, like, but I watch movies a little bit differently, I think, than, like, like that lady. Yeah. Who's just there to watch an entertaining movie. Like, and, like, I'm looking at it from a different angle or perspective, but it fails, like, spectacularly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't really take... I can't even remember my favorite scene. Like, you know what I mean? It was just kind of like a blur of, wah. My favorite stuff is the Hit Girl stuff. About her trying to fit in. I feel like it was her. the acknowledgement of hormones and like watching her go through. It was like, her being Carrie, which she will be soon. Yes, which we saw the trailer for. I'm kind of excited for that. I am, and I'm not. I think like if that if this ad adaptation like sticks closer to the book, I think it could be interesting. But I think she's really miscast as Carrie. I think that needed like oh, yeah. not somebody that's so likable. She's too likable. It's too easy for an audience to get behind her and the evil shit she's gonna do. Yeah. Like it's, it's like a che it's almost like cheating, to me in a way. Well. Cause she is. She's like like she was also in another remake, um, of Let the Right One In. I didn't see that. I can't remember what the hell's the name of the remake she was in. But it's about like this vampire little girl who lives next door meets this boy who's like bullied and stuff, and they become friends. Aww. But it's like very visceral and like really it's actually the, the the original Swedish film is like really really good oh the remake's called Let Me In and the thing that didn't work about her character is that she's too likable she's too much of a known quantity and she kind of like there's a certain amount of warmth and just like in her person that comes across on screen uh, that I think will like work against her when she's trying to do something like Carrie or like Let Me In well we'll see I guess we will. I, I'll go see Carrie. Like, there's enough interesting things there that I'm definitely interested in seeing. Even if it's terrible, like, I'll still want to see it. No, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Um, but yeah. But Kick-Ass, I don't know. I didn't take a ton from it. I, like, I don't have a ton to say on it, because it was just kind of, like, all over the place for me, and I was just kind of, like... What did you think about, it's like... What did you think about Christopher Mintz Plus as mo the motherfucker? I, I find him annoying. Do you? I find him super annoying. Do you really? Yeah. See, I mean, he doesn't bother me. Because I think he like he's so like earnest to yeah. me. Like he seems like a guy that really just wants to be involved in cool things. Like the nerd kid. Like Like the character, I guess. Like McLovin. 
Yeah. No, but like he he actually kind of feels like McLovin. Like he just wants to be so he wants to be cool, and that's why he was like in the remake of Fright Night, and he played like the evil Ed character. I don't know if you ever saw that. No. That's an okay movie. It's okay. It's okay. No. Colin Farrell is actually probably the best part of the remake of Fright Night. Colin Farrell is usually the best part. And I was, and I, that's coming from a fan of the original Fright Night, which you've probably never seen. Nope. Eighties horror movie. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Like I I don't mind him at all. He gets he just gets annoying. I thought me. it was funny. He said he took acting lessons to prepare for this one. Yeah, and I was like, hey, you're kind of just doing the same thing you've always done, man. Yeah. Not like a dig or anything, because I think he's fine. I think he plays he, he plays the character fine. Yeah. I think he may even get what those movies are supposed to be like more than the rest of the actors, because he is very it's like he's very clearly satire. Like, and I feel like he plays it up a little bit. Yeah. Where I don't think everybody gets that. Even Jim Carrey was kind of dead on arrival for me. Like he was like I was super excited to see him and then I was just like, "Oh." And that's like something like that's another thing. Like he's barely in the comic book. He's in the comic book less than he's in the movie. So they added more for Jim Carrey. A little, little bit. Very little, little, little tiny bit. But it was at the same time it's just like that's where the, maybe the movie and the comic book should have parted ways and be like, "Have him be the fucking kick-ass's mentor." Like have this be Kick-Ass's next step into being a hero and accepting heroism, giving him the positive example, like he does in the movie, but it's so undercooked. Oh, it is. That you don't ever get a sense that it affects Kick-Ass in any way. You don't. No, and then when you do see it affects anyone else, not even just Kick-Ass, the whole Justice Forever team, like, it's kind of like an afterthought. Yeah. It's like by the representation of his weapon, and you're kind of like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean... I definitely don't go see this in a theater. It's a rental at best. If yeah. you're if you're if you like Kick Ass and you're just curious to see what Kick Ass Two would be like, don't buy it. Rent it. Yeah. yeah. Or wait till you can stream it, or or wait till it ends up on Netflix or, yeah. or something like that. Because I I don't know. Like I'm a little torn about it because I like kind of the same way I feel about Star Trek Into Darkness. Like I like those actors playing those roles. So I got a sense of enjoyment watching it because of that. Right. More than I got from the actual movie itself. Like, the things going on in the movie, the way it's constructed, you're like, mind bog Like, Kick-Ass 2 is just mind-bogglingly like, what the fuck? John Leguizamo was great, though. John Leguizamo actually had a pretty decent little bit part. He was also created for the movie. Which, <laughs> you know, all these things I'm saying, like, pointing out, like, that was created for the movie. Like... Think about how little there would be in the comic book. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Like, actually, in the comic book, uh, the Red Mist character, or the motherfucker, whatever, is absent up until the last two issues. They just talk about him and having that Twitter group a couple times. Oh, really? Yeah. That's it. That would have been a terrible movie. Yeah. I don't know. I was let down. I'm excited for what's coming tomorrow. Oh, yes. You're next. You're next. Which, if we get a chance to see that this weekend, we'll probably just do a quick episode. Just on that? Just on that. Because I would really, I really want to see that, and I'm sure I'm probably going to have a lot to talk about. Probably write something and talk about it. I'd like to go tomorrow. So we'll probably go tomorrow afternoon and go see that. I've been excited for that movie for a while. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things, so. Sweet! I'm definitely anticipating The animals it. are coming! <laughs> Ooh! And Sweet Lou Reed music. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that'll actually be in the movie. I doubt it. But that trailer's fantastic. I love the trailer for Year Next. Yeah. I think it's awesome. It's one of my favorite trailers I've seen in, like, a couple years. Yeah. Like, always, like, I actually sometimes just watch that trailer just because I like it. Like, like the way it's constructed, like the way they use the music, like, super effective. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, I agree. Really cool. Sorry I got us on that, on sidetracked on that. I just oh, that's okay. didn't have much else to say about Kick-Ass. <laughs> No, no, no. Like I said, as rental at best. Um, I mean, I'm sure some people will probably like it. I think if you really like the comic book, like if you really like the comic book, I think you'll be fine with the movie. Yeah. Because it is, it's there's a very much a straight up adaptation of the comic book, uh, with some added stuff to actually make a movie. Because there really isn't enough there to make a movie. Huh. Uh, a movie that would make any sense. No, I'm not gonna read it, man. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't bother. Okay. Honestly. Like, there's too many other good things to read, like, out there to waste your time with Kick-Ass. Although you could read it in, like, a couple hours. It's like 12 issues. Oh, I could do that quick. Yeah. 
And they're working on Kick-Ass 3 right now, like, the series. Like, because that's how he numbered... Because they... He sold... Mark Millar sold Kick-Ass before the first issue even came out. So they were developing the movie alongside the book, the issues coming out. Yeah. So that's also why some of... There's a it's lot of differences. Stupid, yeah. Uh, that's why there's a lot of differences between the first Kick-Ass series and Kick-Ass 1. And then he, like, labeled just the continuation of the series as Kick-Ass 2 and now Kick-Ass 3 like he knows they're going to be made into movies that's kind of dumb it's a little weird I don't know I after reading Kick-Ass cause like and all the accolades like I remember Kick-Ass being like a thing yeah when it, as a comic book being like it's so audacious and and like just like the just like visceral fucking cool makes me want to be a superhero and I read it and I was like not really man that's some pretty shit comic book writing <laughs> I don't know I mean I'm a little bit of a comic book snob like when it comes a to little, writers little, when it comes to writers a little bit I feel like writers define comic books more than characters I do not give a shit Batman's my favorite superhero but if you give him a shitty writer then it's gonna be a shitty fucking story it's not gonna matter yeah you know it's not gonna matter how much I like the, my love of that character is not gonna pull me through somebody misunderstanding that character very true like Brian K. Vaughn a writer I actually kind of enjoy did Why the Last Man did uh, a new series working right now that I'm reading, Saga. Really fucking awesome. But he did some Batman stories, and they're terrible. And they, like, com- he completely misunderstands, like, how Batman. Like, doesn't get Batman. Maybe for you. No. <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I gotta really Me too. say. I guess we'll be signing off now. I guess so. Oh my god. Click that button. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. My name is Sean. I'm Sarah. And you've been listening to my feature on Facebook podcast. Nine. Visit the blog. Goodbye. Bye.